Hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to the Wetlands Florida. Today's episode is going to be slightly different to normal. We're going to be building a beautiful habitat for Binturong using only in-game barriers and normal construction pieces. Um, so this is going to be quite a challenge for me. The reason that I want to do that is that I always try in these videos or I always hope that they inspire you to make your own habitats. And I know that you guys, some of you are going to be better builders than me and some of you are going to be new to the game or maybe you just don't have time to spend four hours rotating pieces to make one viewing gallery and I thought it'd be cool to try and build something that's actually simple so we're here in the new Indian area of the zoo I took a look at what animals live in Assam over in India and one of the first ones I saw was one of my absolute favorites the Binturong so we're going to build a beautiful but simple habitat for the Binturong right here let's get started so the first thing I'm gonna do is lay out the barriers. Now I'm using a, a uh, technique here which is really useful in franchise mode. So let's ignore the fact that this is a sandbox zoo. I'm just so used to doing it this way, um, which is to use null barriers to lay the shape out. The advantage of this in franchise mode is that they're free. So you can place as many as you like, delete them, place more, change things up until you're perfectly happy with the shape and then you can select them all and replace them with the actual barrier that you want to use. Obviously if you're building in sandbox like I am here and you don't forget that you're in sandbox then you can just build them with the one that you want to use straight away. So I'm going to use the chain link barriers for this habitat. They're probably my favourite of the in-game barriers, not that I ever use them, but they do look like actual barriers that you would see in a zoo. Uh, I'm going to make this really tall acres binturongs climb a lot and B because I think the taller the better when it comes to this kind of barrier the taller it is the less you sort of notice the, the barrier I think and the more you see what's inside and then I'm going to split it in half because I want eventually to have something else on the other side of this and the binturongs don't need a large habitat and then we're going to build a shelter so I'm just using the normal log panel piece here I'm going to have this raised up in the air because that's where binturongs sleep up in the trees um, and then I'm going to try and make it as small as I can whilst still being usable by the binturong. So the roof that I've just put in here is a meter above the base. And then we'll put a ramp in, one of the normal climbing ramps from the habitat menu. Ignore the little custom standoff barrier that's around the whole enclosure at the moment. I put that in in the last episode. We're gonna delete that and replace that with one of the in-game fences. And the key thing with this build is that although we are doing this as simply as possible, it still needs to look good at the end. So I'm using the Australian fence here, which is perfect for this part because it's rusty, which is uh, exactly what you want in a hot, humid climate like this. And we're gonna sink that down into the ground so that you can just see the top rung of the fence. It makes a nice standoff barrier, one of those barriers where you could step over it if you wanted, but it just tells people they shouldn't be stepping past that point, which is what we need here. And then we're gonna copy this all the way around the habitat, adjusting the height where necessary so it all looks nice and smooth. All right, so we have that in all the way around the habitat, and we've got this little area highlighted here again, which is mostly done in the last episode. And that's just one plant and some of the aquatic rocks just to bring to life that little corner there. I've put the normal in-game anti-climb barriers around the uh, habitat to keep the binturongs in, and now we're gonna get back to working on their shelter. So back to the log wall pieces. This log wall top is a great piece because the tops of the logs are differing heights which makes it much more interesting and it actually looks like logs. You can see at the front of the, uh, the flat roof piece that those log ends do not really look like logs. So we'll be covering those up with another piece a bit later. But yeah, we use the top piece and this one meter wall piece just to fill in the habitat. Uh, in case of any bad weather and um, we're going to double this in size it's going to be two binturongs and hopefully some babies at some point in here so it's going to need to be bigger now that i'm happy with this side of it well there's a bit more detailing to go in a second we will double this in size and finish it off so i'm using some of the separate log pieces to cover up the the bits that i mentioned i didn't like the look of um, and then while I was building it, I decided I wanted the binturongs to be able to climb on top of it for enrichment purposes and just because that would be that'd be cool, give them something else to climb on. So I'm going to move it into the center of the habitat. Otherwise, obviously, they're just going to climb on top of it, uh, jump over the fence, and you'll never see them again. So move it into here and then just copy what we've already done over to the other side. And once we've done that, we'll get that ramp back in so the binturongs can get in here. Just copy the logs across. 
use some of the smaller logs as well. Something I didn't realise when I was playing this game for absolutely ages is that once you've got a piece selected, you can select another piece in the menu at the bottom and it will put that piece in in the exact position that the piece you've got selected is. Why it took me like a year to discover that, I don't know, but that is really useful for building. And I'm going to cover this half of the front so it's nice and secluded and leave the other half open so that we can put the ramp in and the bintrongs will be able to climb up in here when they want to uh, get away from the guests or just curl up and go to sleep. Now obviously we need to do a bit of detailing on this um, so it isn't just 100% these logs but the odd decal um, and maybe a bit of ivy or something like that uh, and I think that will uh, that will do us need some legs as well obviously as it's floating at the moment but yeah this is a, a dead simple little shelter I think when it's finished it looks really nice so let's add the legs in just using the same log pieces that we used to cover up the panels so we'll just put four of these uh, in the corners as you would expect let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this by the way guys I know it's very different to what I normally do but I figured I always try and build things as complicated as I possibly can. <laughs> Maybe it'd be fun to build something as simple as possible. But yeah, let me know what you think of it or if you enjoyed it or if it was in any way helpful to you. What I'm going to do now is try and make these barriers a bit more interesting. So I'm going to raise them just at the back here around the shelter to keep the Binturong in their uh, shelter so they can't jump off the roof and escape. And then I think once I've made these parts around here higher, I'm then gonna make the entire enclosure even higher as well because like I say, the higher you make these barriers, you almost forget that they're there. And then I've just put a few moss decals on the shelter. I'm gonna add these ivy pieces in. I think they're called ivy pillars. There's only a couple of them and they are more like one branch with a few leaves coming off it rather than the big spread of ivory that you normally get. And um, they are really useful for stuff like this. I don't want it to be like completely covered in ivy because that's a bit of a stock sort of Planet Zoo uh, trick. So I just want to add a tiny few branches at the bottom here and just makes it look a lot more interesting and takes away from the sort of gridded pieces look. That's pretty much everything with the shelter. Let's get on and start putting in all the foliage and all the stuff that's really gonna bring this to life. So we'll put a bald cypress in the center of the habitat, which is a climbable tree. And obviously one of the most important things for a Binturong habitat is the climbing opportunities. You wanna make sure that they're climbing as much as possible, because I wanna see these guys up in the trees and on climbing platforms like this. We're gonna spend the rest of the episode basically concentrating on getting the climbing right. Uh, and then you'll probably see the sort of the rest of the habitat growing around it. But we're gonna concentrate on, on this aspect of it. So we've got a climbing platform there and then this climbing bridge. So I want this to come off of the tree and then onto the climbing platform so that the Binturong can get up here. I noticed this tree wasn't quite wide enough to affix the bridge onto. So I'm gonna switch it out with this tree, which has got a wider base so that it looks like this is actually pegged into the uh, tree. And then I'm also gonna have climbing coming from the top of the shelter, like I said earlier, up into the tree. And we're gonna put enrichment items around in places that they can only get to by climbing. That's one of the absolute keys to getting them to actually climb um, is to give them things that they can only get to by climbing so they've got a reason to get up there. We'll recolor all of these to a natural wood color so it's a bit more subtle and then put some legs on so it's not just floating in midair. And then we'll deal with the climbing coming from the top of their shelter. So this is always fun working with the vines. I love these things. They're so good for the animals to climb on. They look brilliant. Uh, they actually move in the, uh, in the breeze, which is really cool. But wow, they are difficult to get in the right place. But it is absolutely vital that they are in the right place. I can't have them just connecting to nothing, floating about in the air. So we're gonna do a lot of moving, rotating, etc., until finally it sits into the tree branch and it all looks good. There we go. I'm gonna put a second one in as well, so they've got two ways to get up there. And then we'll put one of my favorite pieces, the hinge, in, in order to, so it looks like it's actually attached to the, uh, the shelter. And then we're gonna put one last vine in that goes down to the ground to make sure that they can actually get up on top of this. They might be able to climb up the bits at the side, but I think logs that go across it stop them from doing that. So 
this makes sure they can definitely get up here and we'll put an enrichment item up on the roof so they've got a reason to go up there we've also got some leaves for them to have a little sleep if they fancy it uh, you can see the cardboard box item up there and that is the uh, the climbing side of things pretty much done let's move on we're going to use one of the temple pieces to put underneath the fence as a sort of concrete support like they're sunk into concrete which is what you want with a fence to stop it from blowing over especially in the Everglades where it gets pretty windy. Some vines at the top of the fence just to make it look a bit more interesting. This is another advantage to having a really tall fence. You can put these big vines on it and it's not going to obscure the view of the guests at all. Then we'll put a sign in, a little custom Binturong sign. I've got a tutorial on how to make these really easily. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description if you, uh, if you want to watch that. There we go. Just colour it as well to suit the theme of the entire zoo with more of a cream colour than the, the black that is the default. And that is the habitat done. I really hope you like it, guys. Stick around for the cinematics. You can see it in all its simple glory. And I'll be back next week with a new episode of The Wetlands. Thanks for watching. Bye.